What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Scott from Fudge Muppet and today I have for you the much anticipated gunslinger build for the Outer Worlds. This is the perfect character to fulfill your fantasies of being that lone gunman on the frontier of space. The perfect experience of the shoot first, ask questions later kind of guy. But let's not pretend you're actually going to be asking questions later anyways. Corpses don't speak all too well. In gameplay, roleplaying and aesthetic of the character, we have made it so that gunslinger gives you that feeling of being a lone ranger, a bounty hunter who solves problems with bullets fired from his revolver or pistol. If it's a one-handed gun, you can guarantee this guy is great with it, pulling effortless headshots and weak spot hits for maximum damage. And the best part of this playstyle is the fact that you can't be touched. We invest heavily in the dodge skill and augment his armor so that you have the footwork and finesse to avoid all incoming fire, all the while responding with deadly accuracy and reflexes. Nothing is more satisfying than surging past an enemy cover only to initiate time dilation and boom, headshot. I will warn you, this is not the character for you if you like to deal with your problems using a silver tongue. A smoking barrel is the only problem solver that the gunslinger knows. But without further ado, let's dive into the character creation and let you know how to begin building this trick shooting, quick drawing, eagle eyed outlaw. So when you are first building your character, you will need to pick attribute values ranging from below average to very high. I'm going to go through every single attribute and explain the rationale behind my choices. Starting with strength, we keep it as an average ranking. We don't need strength at all, but if we were to go below average, we would end up with a penalty to our movement drain in time dilation, which we do not want for a build that makes great use of time dilation. Secondly, we have dexterity and we've kept this at an average ranking. Now, some may wonder why we don't increase this for the handgun skill and to increase the reload speed for ranged weapons. Well, simply put, the 30% increase to reload speed is unnecessary as far as I can tell from my testing. Pistols reload really quickly anyways, and in addition, once this build is rolling, a full magazine will be all you need most of the time to clear a group of enemies. But onwards to the mind attributes. We have a very high intelligence, not because it's necessary for this character to have tech skills, or that this character from a role-playing angle is supposed to be some kind of brainiac, but instead, it's for the massive boost to critical damage that we will get, and when combined with high critical chance of handguns 100, we'll have a recipe for unloading massive damage. Anyways, I'd guess you have to be pretty smart to get by in the outer worlds all by your lonesome. Next up is perception, and as you can imagine, for an absolute crack shot, this character has perception at very high for maximum headshot and weak spot damage, reflecting the gunslinger's eagle eyes and finesse. Then we have charm, which will remain at an average ranking. You don't need a lot of charm when you have a pistol to do all the talking. We also have an average temperament because we don't have spare points to use, and there's no point in taking away passive health regeneration. Some may argue that you could make charm and temperament below average and make dexterity high, but I tested this and the missing health regen and reputation penalties are far worse than missing out on the 20% extra reload speed for a pistol that already reloads pretty quick. But if that's what you want to do, then go for it. But the essential part is definitely the maxed out intelligence and perception. So we have the attributes sorted. Let's have a look at our starting skill choices. The absolute priority for this character is going to be ranged and defense. You may notice that our long gun skill is higher, which comes as a consequence of our attribute choices, so it will take slightly longer to get to handguns 100, but it's well worth the intelligence and perception attribute investment. Now, speaking of handguns, that's the important skill here. Once you have it to 50, focus on getting it to 100. And our second choice of starting skill to boost is defense, which is entirely for the dodge skill, which is the real game changer here. It's what takes this build from a similar experience to any character who uses a pistol and transforms it into a gunslinger, the John Wick style running and gunning fantasy. Now, for aptitude, you guys know I like the resistance based ones, though it doesn't matter all too much because they are such small, insignificant bonuses. Anyways, for the gunslinger, I chose to have the beverage technician, which gives 3% more drink effect duration, which is completely irrelevant for this character outside of the fact that what kind of cowboy on the front 
Frontier doesn't love a drink of hard liquor, so he needs to know how to make them. Now, I actually built this character as a mix of Clint Eastwood-style Western cowboy, Boba Fett slash Cad Bane, John Wick, and Dario Naharis from A Song of Ice and Fire, which is why I chose the coloured beard and name. So you can follow that inspiration if you like, but ultimately what matters is that he's a space cowboy, gunslinging, bounty hunter type who solves problems with bullets. So now you know how to start, how to set up this character, let's talk about skills in terms of progression and then we'll move on to perks and flaws. So when you get past the little tutorial opening and get to the unreliable, you will get a level up and here is what I choose to do. It's actually not dump straight into ranged and dodge. I actually for this character like to round out some of the skills that are just shy of 20 so we can access some of the quality of life benefits from their abilities. So in the first level up, I put two points into ranged, two points into defense, two points into dialogue, two points into stealth, and two points into tech. So this character is not dialogue focused at all, so why the persuade? Well, getting persuade to 20 unlocks an ability which means humans have a 20% chance to cower in fear for three seconds after you first hit them, which I thought was a cool added bonus for such a small investment, and it fits the vibe of villains terrified of the John Wick slash Clint Eastwood type killer. Hack 20 gives us the ability to sell to vending machines, which is just convenient. Lockpick gets boosted as a consequence. Medical 20 gives the second slot for the inhaler, which is handy. But most of all, Science 20 allows us to tinker weapons and gear. And Engineering 20 allows us to repair our weapons and gear in the inventory. So that's what I like to do for the level two, rounding out the character a little bit with some handy benefits for little cost. But now the absolute focus is pounding the ranged skill until we have handguns 50 and then we attack taking that to 100 ASAP over the next levels. Also, the long guns 40 at the beginning will help us quite a bit considering many of the better weapons of the first area like the hunting rifle and assault rifle benefit from this. I like to use a mix of long guns and handguns until my handguns gets to about 60, mainly because the light pistol isn't that great. Like most builds, they won't really come into fruition at least until you leave the first area, the Emerald Vale. That's when they start to take shape. And for this character, once you have the handgun skill at 100, you want to go all in on defense till dodge 50, then take dodge to 100 ASAP. Like I mentioned, this is what's going to transform this build into the ultimate gunslinger. You'll have all the moves, able to dash distances in a blink, only to turn around at the confused enemy and put a shot through their eye. Dodge 20 gives us the ability to dash forwards, dodge 40 increases dodge recovery speed by 100%, 60 dodge gives us plus 30% armor rating for 5 seconds after every dodge, and all of this in context means we have some great defensive capabilities, allowing us to get out of the line of fire, and even if we don't quite miss the shot, we get improved defense through armor rating. The dodge 80 ability is only only relevant to melee characters, but when you get dodge 100, we unlock an awesome ability which complements this zippy shooter playstyle very well. After dodging, your next weak spot hit within 5 seconds has a 50% chance to ignore armor entirely. So in short, this build will benefit a lot from moving quickly around the battlefield, constantly dodging, keeping your enemy guessing, and wondering how you can move so damn fast. Our gear mods further enhance this dodging playstyle, but we'll talk about this in the weapon and gear section. The handguns 100 skill gives us heaps of critical chance and reduced weapon sway, as well as 50% more crit damage, stacking on top of our bonus 35% from very high intelligence, and we also get armor penetration, but at level 100, we get the awesome ability which makes critical hits ignore 100% of armor, so high crit chance with high crit damage that ignores 100% of armor is an absolute recipe for death, and even when you don't crit, your weak spot hits have a 50% chance to ignore armor if you've dodged in the last 5 seconds, which we do all the time, so in other words, beefy armoured targets are no sweat at all. Now, beyond the handgun and dodge skills, the choice of focus is really up to you, but here's what I recommend. Specifically for this build, we are solving problems with a gun, so dialogue skills were the last thing I was going to invest in. Instead, I think going for tech and stealth skills will be the most beneficial. Science will keep your tinkering costs down, medical will improve your inhaler, and engineering will improve your repairability. All these things that apply to most builds. Also, lockpick and hacking will just give you general access to more areas and loot. 
But I think that about wraps it up for skills. It's time to talk about perks. Time dilation is very important for this character. It's going to give you that Red Dead Redemption quick reflexes feel, and we'll want to pick perks that benefit an overall aggressive combat-oriented playstyle. For Tier 1, I would recommend getting the Toughness perk, which adds an additional 50% base health beneficial for survival early on, and later it will pair well with Harvester and the fact you play with tactics that exposes you to more potential damage. Slow the Void and Quicken the Dead increase your time dilation meter by 25% and increase the recharge rate by 50%, both big essentials for this character. Now, the next perk I recommend is Lone Wolf, which increases all your damage by 25% as long as you have no companions, and this build will not. I'll elaborate more in the companion section. Cheetah giving you extra sprint speed is always nice to have for that extra combat speed, and I found that high maintenance reducing durability loss for weapons and armor by 25% was really damn useful considering we fire our pistols so damn much. In Tier 2, there are three standout perks here that will assist and incentivize that dash into battle and hit them hard playstyle. The aforementioned Harvester perk gives you 15% health back on each kill, which encourages you to keep going and going. If you keep killing, you keep living. The Reaper perk restores your time dilation bar by 25% for each kill, which is more incentive to use that high momentum, high kill count playstyle. But of course, because this build relies on momentum, we want to be accurate and efficient with our kills. And headshots is the name of the game. Time dilation helps massively here, and the perk Scanner increases headshot and weak spot damage by 20% while using time dilation. So you can start to see how these perks all feed into one another, and then when you consider some of the tier 3 essentials, it gets even juicier. Confidence is an absolute must. It means that the first shot after every kill is always a critical hit, and if you are pulling headshot after headshot, it can get you into a chain of critical kill after critical kill. It's all about momentum. The dodging, the time dilation, the headshots. Steady Hand is also really nice and fits the momentum playstyle perfectly, making it so after every kill, you experience a 100% reduction to weapon sway and movement penalty to accuracy, making you a run and gun machine. Boom Headshot is also fun, causing headshot kills to cause 25% of the damage to nearby enemies, but that one isn't 100% necessary. This build can take advantage of quite a few perks, so flaws may be a decent idea. I found that for this build, taking weakness flaws worked out well because the playstyle was all about avoiding bullets, killing quick, and getting health back. So I took the plasma and shock weakness flaws for some extra benefits earlier on. Now we're at the part where we talk about companions, and for this build in particular, this should be pretty easy because we have none. Firstly, for this character, I wanted that lone wanderer vibe, so I think a companion kind of kills that. Secondly, we want to buff our damage as much as possible because we don't have help, which means taking the lone wolf perk for 25% extra damage with no companions. Now, of course, if you do want companions, do not take this perk. Obviously, we recommend doing no companions, but if you must, I think that role-playing wise, Ellie and probably Naoka make the most sense here. So enough about companions, you should ideally play this as a lone wolf anyways, but let's talk about what this lone wolf uses for weapons and gear. Let's talk gear first. For this character, there were a few feelings I was trying to mesh, so we ended up with this space cowboy bounty hunter kind of look. Imagine Cad Bane mixed with Django Fett. He has a bit of armor, but of course he has the hat. Can't imagine a gunslinger without a cool hat. Earlier on, you can use the protective safety harness or another medium armor. You can also also use the legendary sublight armor, however, we want a set that we can modify mods ourselves. So I chose Ordnance Control Armor Gold. By the end game, it makes you look like this dangerous gunslinging bounty hunter, and the mods are anodized corrosion resistant armor, the chrono field aggregator, the hunter kit for ranged skill, but most importantly, the leaper injectors, which give us a bonus dodge distance of 30%. This makes your dodges go really far, and in this armor, it almost feels like you have a jetpack assist these massive dashes across the battlefield. Now for the hat, it doesn't actually help our playstyle, it just looks damn cool. This is the wide-brimmed hat that I bought from Bronson in Amber Heights. It increases long guns by plus five, and you can use long guns as a backup, so that's partially beneficial, but mostly it's just to look cool. However, ladies and gentlemen, I do have an alternative aesthetic, if you so desire. For helping deal with Clive in the Borst factory, you will be rewarded with the Sublight Contractor Helm, which actually comes 
comes with a noticeable armor rating and a bonus 25% damage to creatures, which will actually help you in combat. It also makes you look like some badass masked bounty hunter, if that's what you would prefer. But ultimately, I chose to stick with the cowboy hat. But now we know what he looks like, the clothes he wears, the hat he dons, let's talk about the big iron on his hip. For the gunslinger, any handgun will do. Revolver, bolter pistol, the vermin, but my personal favorite is the automag pistol. The vermin fulfills that heavy revolver feel better, but the automag still looks pretty gunslinger to me. Plus, it was easier to find an automag pistol ultra earlier on. Also, Irion's flintlock is a legendary version that is useful for the early game. I actually equipped two of these automag pistols. My primary was modified for critical damage, magazine size, and reduced weapon spread, and handled most enemies, but I also had one with rate of fire, reduced weapon spread, and shock damage for handling mechanical targets with ease in addition. I also carried a hunting rifle ultra just for those occasional times where I wanted to pot shot from far away, but obviously the main play style is running and gunning. Now, I'll drop my perspective on choosing your weapon. Ultimately, burst fire isn't great for this build setup. We want to find the high damage single shot weapons so that when we land a critical hit or headshot, it does a damage percentage increase based on the higher single shot damage. So for this, the vermin revolver would be best, but in my experience, I found the auto mag pistol to be a better sweet spot, allowing us to have a higher magazine size, but still sturdy shots. But additionally, it has less recoil and was comfier to fire accurately while zipping around everywhere. But I think that just about does it for all the statistical information about this build. The character creation, skill progression, perks, flaws, companions, weapons and gear. Now it's time to get into the backstory and the role playing. So the gunslinger was not always so. Over 70 years ago, he was an A plus student through all his schooling and went on to university, moonlighting as a beverage service technician, or in the words of the common man, a bartender. One night he was closing up the bar, locking up and leaving, but four thugs ambushed him in the alley, beating him up, stealing the keys and raiding the bar of all its goods and bits. As he lay there beat and bloody, he took in every detail he could about their clothes, their faces, scars, freckles, etc. He eventually regained his composure and sought out help. You would think that the next day when he returned from work after being in the police station recounting his story all night, that he would be met with some sympathy from his boss. Well. You'd be wrong. Losing possession of the keys to the premises was a severe breach of his employment contract and came with a penalty deduction of one month's pay. Plus, he had to reimburse 35% of the stolen goods for negligence breaches. A few weeks went by with no pay. Plus, he had essentially emptied his bank account. And on top of that, the stress of it all caused him to fail tests and be late for assignments. And what the hell was it all for anyways? Just to end up in a world of endless red tape bureaucracy and douchebaggery. On Friday, he spent the whole night awake, contemplating his life with a TV playing in the background, running all the classic westerns. He momentarily got distracted by one of the shows and ended up watching the whole thing. He wished he could be just like that, living a free life on the frontiers of the old world, but fate was about to hand him his ticket. Advertising for the Halcyon Colony came on, promising a new life, a grand adventure in the outer worlds. This was his chance to escape it all, to live a life on his own terms. He just needed the money though, so with the last of his bits he bought a revolver, a six-shooter, just like in the westerns. He had a plan. For the next weeks at work, through chatting and subtly investigating, he tracked down one of the thugs that had ambushed him in the alley. It wasn't all too hard to find them. It made him think that the cops must have been paid off to look the other way. He found that they lived in an abandoned apartment block a few streets away. The gunslinger knew this was his moment. All that stood between him and Halcyon was these thugs. Late at night, he entered that building with six bullets loaded into his revolver. Five minutes and six shots later, he left the building, dropping his revolver in the trash can. The next morning, police found the four men dead. Three shot in the head, one shot in the kneecaps, and then additionally shot between the eyes. The thug's stash of bits had been cleaned out, but by this time, the gunslinger was already aboard the Hope, being frozen and sent to the Halcyon system. After being awakened by Phineas, the gunslinger finds the unreliable and becomes the captain of his own ship. He lives a life on his own terms, and nobody ever again will get in his way or lock him down. Talking, pleading, discussing, look where that got him before. Nowhere. His whole life. A smoking barrel of a gun, however, that brought him a new life. 
shoot first, don't bother asking questions, is generally his motto. In a role-playing sense, the gunslinger is completely self-interested, but does not crave after unessential financial gain. He just wants freedom, to feel alive on the frontier. The only somewhat strict rule for role-playing this character is to use your gun to solve problems, so playing Kumbaya with all the factions isn't going to be a realistic option here. The one faction I think that really suits this character well is the Sublight Salvaging and Shipping Faction, aka a band of space pirates, but outside of that, whatever suits him, working for the board, working for Phineas, Groundbreaker, MSI, doesn't matter as long as he gets paid and ultimately has freedom. He isn't in it for any cause, philosophy or ideology. Bits, booze and bullets, that's all he needs. I particularly used the attack option in dialogue and it leads to some pretty fun scenarios. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Gunslinger build. To wrap it up nicely, remember bits, booze and bullets, sublight faction, dodging, shooting and wearing a cool hat. That about wraps the Gunslinger up. Leave a like if you enjoyed this build and subscribe for more Outer Worlds builds and related content in the future. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.